So good morning. So come to the center of your mat and find your Tadasana. So today's practice is going to consist of side bends and twists. And for the most part, those, that class of poses is neutralizing. For example, um, like forward folds are pacifying and relaxing. Heart extensions, heart openers are invigorating and energizing. So like I spoke about as we were checking in about the idea of um, having tools to use to find a practice or adjust a pose to suit your body any day, you could um, know that about those qualities the energetic qualities of classes of poses to suit your, ener your energy on a particular day. If you really need a little, you're a little scattered, you need to really balance and ground your energy. You might do things that are, like I said, side bending, twisting, or if you need to come inward, calm down, you might do forward foldings, or if you're feeling a little low energy, you may choose to focus a little bit more on some back bending and heart opening and energizing poses. So just a little tip about that. And to, just to get our energy moving and our breath going, we will start with our favorite breath of joy. So remember, it's uh, the three-part yogic breath, little sips of air in the belly, the middle lungs, and the upper lungs, and then through the nose, and then one big exhale out of the mouth. You can, you know, make it uh, do a sounding like a ha to release, and that feels really nice. It's a little bit of a kriya, a real, real energizing, oxygenating type of a, a breath. So a um, little, you know, find a nice ground to your feet, but keep a little softness to the belly and, or to the body, to the knees. And when you come forward, you can even soften your knees and send your arms back and go into a forward fold. So here we go. First time, a little slow. Inhale, 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 exhale. Ha! It's a little energizing. Okay, so we'll do a little balancing here, you know, work on our balance. And what we'll do is we're just going to, for starters, shift the weight towards the balls of the feet. You're going to come up as high on the heels as feels comfortable for you. Shift your weight towards the heels and lift the toes. And um, when you roll to the balls of your feet, you can bring your arms forward. So we're going to add a little movement here. That's what makes it a little more challenging, too, is that we've got this movement going on. So just kind of get the hang of it, rolling on the feet. And then as you get a little more comfortable, maybe you can roll all the way up onto the balls of your feet and send your arms overhead. Get long. And then exhale. You can even fold a little and soften your knees. So just go back and forth like that. And then as this is becoming a little more, you're getting a little more accustomed to this movement, maybe you can send your arms up overhead, bend your elbows, and let your hands clasp or just tap opposite shoulders. And then exhale arm. And just do one side. Don't worry about switching the arms yet. <laughs> you know that's coming. And now, see if you can do the opposite tap, so my, um, or the opposite overlap, because one arm is over the other, so do the opposite. And go at your own pace, right, again, suiting the practice to where you are in your body. And let's do two more. And last time. And pause. Oh, hello, calves. They're getting a good warm up, right? <sighs> okay, nice. 
All right. So now we'll do our half sun salutation, you know, Arda, Uta, oh, I'm sorry, Arda Uttanasana. And uh, you can have blocks if you want to have your blocks. All right. So it's just that half forward fold, fold and half lift. So from finding our Tadasana, good. Ground the three corners of your feet, the big toes, pinky toes, heels. Engage your legs, tone the belly, shoulders up, back, and down. Inhale, get long. You know, you keep your arms out to the sides, up to the sky. Lift your heart. Come back to center. Exhale, hinge forward, all the way down to a forward bend. Hands on the legs, the blocks of the earth. Rise up halfway. Exhale, fold, bend your knees, arms out like a T, rise all the way up, get long again. Exhale, hands to prayer. Two more times like that. Inhale, elongate, you can take a little extension if it feels okay. Exhale, forward fold, hands to prayer or swan dive. Inhale, rise up, half lift, get long. Exhale, back into your fold, bend your knees, belly on thighs, lift your chest, use your strong legs to rise you up. Hands to prayer, prayer to heart. One more time. Inhale, exhale. See, so this is the vinyasa right here. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. The linking the movements with the breath is our vinyasa. All right. So now let's take an inhale, bring your arms out to the sides, up to the sky. Let's do an Ardhashandrasana, uh, a half moon. So let's just flow side to side for a couple of rounds. You can keep your arms parallel. They could come closer, they could even interlace. It's up to you. And the next time you fold to the right, let's hold it there. Great. Lower the right arm down. Inhale, look down at your right foot. Exhale, look up to the left arm. Two more breaths. Inhale, look down at your right foot. Exhale, look up to the left arm. One more time. Inhale, look down at the right foot. Exhale, look up to the left arm. Go a little deeper into your side bend and then rise up. Arms are parallel. Let's take that right over to the left. Staying here, lowering the left arm down if you like. Inhale, look down at the left foot. Exhale, fold a little deeper as you look up to the right arm. Inhale, look down to the left foot. Or the floor. Exhale, look up to the arm. One more. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, rises you up. Exhale, hands to prayer. Nice. Okay, now let's go into our warrior one sequence. So we'll take one of those half lifts, you know, our, our forward fold to get us there. On your Tadasana, have your blocks handy so they could help you um, stepping back into your warrior one. So they could, the blocks, if I was using blocks, I'd have them kind of framing my feet here. Right? I'll just put it here so you can see my feet. Big inhale, get long, maybe take your extension. Exhale, hinge from your hips, forward bend, swan dive. Inhale, rise up halfway, get long. Tone the belly. Exhale, take that fold and go back down. Hands frame your feet on your blocks or the earth. Step your left foot back. Now this is the Kripalu Warrior One where we keep our back heel lifted. You can see my back heel is lifted. If it's more comfortable for you, plant the foot. Um, but keep a frontal orientation of your torso. And that might um, be easier if you walk your right foot out a little bit to the right so you have more hips with. Okay, now let's rise straight up into warrior one pose. Your hands could come onto your thigh for support, or you could send them all the way up to the sky here. All right, so here we are. Right knee is over the ankle, left hamstring lifts. So both legs are active, belly's toned, shoulders are relaxed down the back. Bring your hands together and lower them in front, sword hands. Ah, beautiful. Cutting through all those obstacles in the body, any tightness of breath. Take another inhale and then open up your arms, Devyasana arms. Inhale, lift your heart here, lift your gaze, squeeze shoulder blades together so you've got a little extension, a little balance challenge right here. 
Good. And then exhale as we straighten the right leg, straighten your front leg. You can bring your hands onto your thigh into an interlace for this pyramid pose. You can have your hands on your blocks or the hands on the earth and let the back heel lower. Front knee can stay soft as necessary to protect your hamstring. Pyramid pose, Parsvottanasana. And breathe here, nice. Bend your front knee, send your arms to the sky, back up warrior one pose. And then we're gonna step forward. So put the weight into your right foot, step your left foot to meet your right, lower your arms. Here we are, piece of cake. Okay, other side. Big inhale, take your extension if you like. Exhale, hinge from your hips, swan dive, forward bend. Inhale, rise up halfway. Exhale, fold, step your right foot back. Bend the knee, arms to the sky, Virabhadrasana one. Going to find your posture here. So draw that left hip back, right hip forward. The knee is right over the ankle, nice and safe. Back leg is active too, belly's toned, shoulders are relaxed. Lower your arms, sword hands. Really reach your fingers forward. So your arms are active too. Bend your elbows, open up your heart. Devyasana, lift your heart, lift your gaze. Squeeze shoulder blades together. Take an extension here. Your strong legs are balancing you. You're nice and stable. And then from here, straighten your left leg, hinge forward, pyramid pose on this side. Interlacing your hands above the knee, letting that back heel lower, or bringing your hands onto blocks or the floor. And breathe here a couple of breath cycles. Good. Take one more breath, inhale, exhale, sink a little deeper. Inhale, bend your knee, send your arms forward, rise all the way up, warrior one pose again. All right, now we're preparing to come forward. Shift your weight into your left leg, step your right foot to meet your left, lower your arms by your sides. How was that? Good, Good. okay. Um, I'm just tempted to do one more of those with our breath and make it a vinyasa. Let's do it. Let's do one more each side and we'll really, so that you get to know what a vinyasa is. It really just means linking the poses with the breath. And because of that, because you're moving, it becomes a little bit more of a cardiovascular practice. Um, a lot of times more challenging poses are linked in. So that's why it is often thought of to be a more vigorous practice, but doesn't necessarily have to be. It just means linking poses with breath, moving with breath. That's all it means. All right, so let's, let's, do a, let's make this a vinyasa. Inhale, take your extension. Exhale, hinge from your hips, forward fold. Inhale, rise up halfway, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, step back with the left foot, bend the right knee. Exhale completely. Square your and find your low lunge. Inhale, rise up, warrior one. Exhale, lower your arms, sword hands. Inhale, open up Devyasana. Exhale, straighten your legs, forward fold pyramid, wherever the hands are. Inhale, take a breath. Exhale and fold. Inhale, bend the right knee, rise up, warrior one. Exhale, step forward to Dasana. Nice. We got this. Other side. Inhale. Elongate, maybe extend. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold, step back, right foot. Bend the knee. Exhale completely. Inhale, rise up. Let's exhale here. Inhale, then exhale, send your arms forward. Inhale, open up Devyasana, maybe even lifting your gaze. Exhale, forward fold, pyramid pose. Taking that full breath cycle, inhale. Exhale, go a little deeper. Next, inhale, bend the knee, rise up, Vira one. And then exhale, step forward to Dasana. Good job. All right. 
Nice. Okay, so wave number two. Let's step out to a wide-legged fold. I'm gonna go this way so you can see me. All right, and you may want your blocks here. Mm, let's see, if you're gonna use your blocks, I would have them one at each foot. You know, maybe uh, to the inside of the outside of the foot if you choose to use your blocks. Okay, and our feet are about parallel. Maybe as you move, it might be more comfortable in the hips and knees if your toes turn ever so slightly out. We're gonna go into kind of a skandhasana ultimately, that side lunge, which we love. Okay, but for starters, we're gonna take a forward fold. So connect your feet to the earth like you do Tadasana. Feel the outside edges of your feet, especially the pinky toe sides ground. And then when you do that, do you feel the rest of your legs engage? The kneecaps lift, the quads engage, maybe the inner thighs engage. Lift from the pelvic floor to tone the belly. Let's bring our shoulders up, back, and down, but then let's bring our hands to prayer. Okay, we're gonna take a forward fold here. So hinge forward and pause when your torso is parallel to the earth. Okay, we'll do that a few more times and then rise back up. So we're taking a lot of core strength here. Inhale, exhale, and hinge forward. So you might want to widen or shorten your stance and then rise back up. One more. Exhale, hinge forward. Pausing here, feel a lot of strength in the belly. You're shifting your weight forward towards the balls of your feet, and then rise back up. Now we're gonna do it one time with the holding, but let's send our arms out like a T. Activate your arms. Inhale here, exhale, hinge forward, and then really reach through your fingertips, shift your weight forward to the balls of your feet, tone your belly. In these forward folds, we get a little comfortable with this idea of the forward space. All right, you're nice and stable, so hold yourself up. Take one more breath, and then rise back up. This next time we're gonna go down. Now, if you don't wanna have your head below your heart, bring your hands onto your blocks and use your blocks here. You know, keep your, or you know, bring a chair over. Exhale, hinge forward, and then we're gonna start to windmill. So you're gonna bend the right knee and bring your left hand onto your thigh, your shin, or the top of your right foot, and then rise back up. And then bend the left knee, right hand comes onto the top of that foot, and rise back up. Now keep going at your own pace. And even start to twist and look to the opposite side, like look towards that extended arm. Maybe you're coming into a nice gentle ujjayi breath. You're toning your belly. You're twisting and breathing into the upper lungs. One more time each side. Now the next time we go to the right, let's hold it there. So hand on the foot. You're bringing out the belly, looking up towards your right hand. If you can, bring your right leg towards straighter and really twist a little deeper. Three breaths here. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. One more. Inhale and exhale. Derotate by bending the knee, twisting over to the other side, bend the left foot. The right hand comes onto the thigh, the shin, or the top of that foot. Bring out your belly, look up to the left. Three breath cycles as you bring your left leg towards straighter. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. One more. Inhale and exhale. And then bend the knee, rise back up into our wide-legged stance. Exhale, arms by your sides. Step or hop back to center. Good job. Take a couple of clearing breaths. Big inhale. Exhale it out. Inhale. Exhale with the side. One more. Big inhale. And then lower your arms super slow. Just slowly lower your arms. All right. 
So let's go to wave number three, which will consist of some warrior uh, triangles and warriors. So you can step or hop your legs back out, turn your right foot to the top of your mat. Yeah, you know what? Um, have, you might have your blocks handy, but um, you know, you could always just use your leg. We're gonna do triangle first. So that right foot faces the short side of your mat, left foot is perpendicular or turns in. Good, belly's toned, long spine, lift your arms to shoulder height, tuck that right hip under, lower left arm down, I'm sorry, right arm down, left arm to sky, and keep lengthening your torso, spinning your heart open. Maybe look up towards that left hand, Two more breath cycles here. Big inhale, get long. Exhale, see if you can spin your heart open a little bit more. One more. Inhale, elongate. Exhale, spin open. Good. And then with your strong legs, rise back up and reverse the triangle. So lower the left hand to the left hamstring. Spin the right arm up to the sky. Nice big stretch in the whole right side body. Breathing into the right lung around this right side of your heart. Feel this balancing of energy. One more breath, and then let's rise on up, bend our right knee, and take our warrior two pose. Now make sure the knee isn't dropping in, right? So can you see that from the front? This is what sometimes happens. So especially if the muscles, the, the quadriceps to the inner knee are a little weak. So draw that knee towards the pinky. I'm gonna go sideways so you see this. Draw it like kind of a little way, even if you have to exaggerate a tiny bit even if you want to turn your foot ever so slightly to um, learn this body mechanic. So draw that knee away, back legs active, arms are active, looking down the middle finger of her right hand, that's the drishti. And let's take a side angle. So let's go forward, hand on the thigh or your form on the thigh or your block, left arm by the side, on the hip, up to the sky or overhead. Three breaths here, big inhale. Exhale, spin your heart open. Inhale, strong legs. Exhale, reaching through that left arm, wherever it is, or the side body. One more, inhale, exhale, spin your heart open. And then keep your legs where they are. Strong legs, rise your upper body. And then really reverse it. Reverse the warrior, left arm down, reaching up and back. Good. Maybe lunge a little farther forward with the front leg. Again, see if you how far it feels comfortable to fold back. Good. Inhale and exhale. One more breath. Inhale and exhale. Rise back up. Okay. Now let's bring our hands to prayer. And see if you can keep your warrior legs, even if you have to turn the back feet, the back foot, and see if you can rotate your torso more forward. We're going to take a revolved side angle. So this is a tricky one. I'm going to show it with our knee down for starters. So you could even prop your knee if it feels uncomfortable or just stay here and just do what you can do. Stay high if you don't want to be on your knee. We're just going to basically turn. But there is a little hook, a little bind that happens and you really are trying to keep your warrior stance and rotate. So, okay, this could be, this could be it, right? If I want to try hooking, I'm having trouble really getting a nice hook. What I might do is lower the back knee, rotate here like we do in our prayer twist, hinge forward, you know, find your twist, one elbow, the left elbow to the outside of the knee, right elbow to sky, get it, get, you know, some space between my belly and thigh, feel some nice rotation in my belly, some length through my torso. Then when that's all kind of stabilized, I can stay here. But I might want to lift my back leg and keep a warrior foot. I'm sorry, a warrior one foot, you know, like a crescent lunge foot. Or I might want to plant my foot. Can you see what happened? I just planted it down at that 45 degree angle. And here we go. Inhale and exhale. A couple of breaths. Inhale and exhale. Keep getting long through the torso, wringing out the belly. One more breath, inhale and exhale, and then de-rotate. Maybe let your hands frame your right foot to give yourself some support as you step your left foot to meet your right into your forward fold. Just surrender. Rise up halfway, exhale and fold, and then bend your knees till your belly's on your thighs, 
arms come out like a T, lift your chest, strong legs, rise you up, hands to prayer, prayer to your heart. Good job. That one, that Parivrita Parsvo Kanasthana is a little challenging. Revolved side angle. All right, let's try it on the other side. So, um, yeah, let's start from the wide legged stance. So let's step or hop out to your wide legged stance. Turn that left foot out, right foot in. I'm going to be facing this way. Hopefully, you can see me. I'm going to actually, I'm going to turn. Okay. Right. Both legs are active, belly's toned, arms lift up to shoulder height. Really reach your arms apart so you're brought across your collarbones. Tuck the left hip under, reach forward with left arm and rib cage, lower that arm down, other arm to sky. Utita Trikonasana. Inhale, get long, exhale, and spin your heart open. Inhale, and exhale. One more. Inhale. And exhale. The next inhale, let's use our strong legs to help us rise up. Lower the right hand to the right hamstring, left arm to sky, reversing your triangle. And breathe here. Three breath cycles. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. One more. Inhale and exhale, and then rise back up to the starting position. Bend the left knee, find Vera two. So make sure that knee is over the ankle and drawing away. Don't let that knee collapse in. Right hamstrings active, belly's toned, arms are active. Side angle, three breaths. Hand on the thigh or forearm on the thigh or extending down maybe onto the block. Okay, arm to sky or overhead. This is what makes it the side angle though, the back foot through the torso, up through that extended arm as it comes next to your ear. You know, wherever that is, that's the side angle. And if anybody knows what type of triangle this is, you get bonus points. And spin your heart open, take one more breath, and then ground the legs, rise back up to warrior two. Let's reverse our warrior, lowering, the right hand to right hamstring, left arm to sky. Go a little farther forward with your legs and then reach that upper body back. So your body's moving in these two directions, getting space on that left side body, deepening the breath. And then rise back up to our warrior two posture, getting ready for that revolved side angle. Parivrita, Parishvokanasana. Hands to prayer. Use the prayer hands, the pressure of the hands to rotate your torso forward again, like we do for warrior one. Keep the leg as it is, or you know, find a nicer angle so that your hip feels happy. I'm gonna keep the happy hips. Right, I'm gonna turn this way now so you can see this posture. All right. So Again, you can start, you can press your hands together and just stay here and twist as much as you're able to to the left. That's fine. You can hinge forward and find your revolve side angle here, or you could lower that knee down so that you can get, you know, your best twist and then lift that and stay here. Or last stage, lift that leg back up and plant the foot. Wherever you ended up, three breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And then you'll use, let's arise. Or derotate. Hands frame the left foot. Right foot steps forward to meet the left. Back into our forward fold. Inhale, rise up halfway. Exhale and fold. Bend your knees, belly on your thighs. Lift your chest, lift your arms, strong legs. Help you to rise up. Hands to prayer and the prayer to your heart. Take a few breaths here. Maybe bring a hand on the belly and a hand on the heart. And notice how you're feeling now. Notice 
the quality of your breath, the energy, your mind state, just noticing the effects of our standing postures. So let's do a couple balances. And I thought we will, I thought we could do our balancing half moon. So Ardha Shandrasana is this pose. <laughs> this, I usually, so I usually say standing Ardha Shandrasana so you know it's not the balancing Ardha Shandrasana, right? So uh, we'll do balancing, Ardha Shandrasana, and then we'll rotate it and do Parivrita Ardha Shandrasana. So Parivrita just means, you know, twisted. So a couple of blocks, maybe a chair, if you want, I'll, I'll show really quick what I had in mind. And how many times you do it is up to you. But um, don't make it like, you know, remove, you know, don't make it like a vinyasa, go in and out of it too much. Like hold for a couple of breaths so you can really settle in and then do the other side. So maybe you do each side twice or, or three times, depending on what you feel comfortable with. So um, I, I'll, show, I'll show with the chair. So you wanna make sure your, your um, hands are, or your hips are in line with your ankles here. So if my arm's gonna be out like this and I'm making kind of an L of my body, that's fine. Then I could ground my right foot into the earth Send that left leg up. Focus on opening that hip to the side so that my foot's parallel to the earth. Can you see that? It's really parallel. In fact, you know, actually I'm gonna show you this. This is great. If you are near a wall, you can do this right on a wall. Just wanna make sure the hip, the ankle's in line with the hip and um, the foot's parallel. So then I'm pressing on the wall and this is actually my prop. Then I don't even kind of need the chair because I've got the prop back there and then I could float open. It's really nice and stable, right? And then when I go to the other side, I'm gonna to have to pivot on the wall, toes are down, and then I will twist in the other direction. You know, I might wanna come down for this one. And then we'll go back to the first one. So again, foot on the wall, hand on your chair, or hands on your blocks. If you're using blocks, make sure your hands are underneath your shoulders. So I'll show the other side with my blocks. My hips are right over my ankles. My hands are forward so they're under my shoulders so my torso can be long, belly toned. My right leg lifts. I'm gonna to start to, before I even do anything with my arm, in fact, I could put my arm on my hip so that allows my torso to open to the side. My foot opens to the side. So my foot is at a 90 degree angle. And then I could open up my arm. I'm going to hold it for a couple of breaths to settle in. And then I'll work on revolving and going to the other side. You know, my toes are down now rather than out. And then I'm rotating from my belly. I'm keeping the hip, the leg lifted to hip height. All right. So here we go. Ardha Shandrasana, balancing Ardha Shandrasana. So get yourself set up. And then let's, uh, let's stand on our right foot first. Hinge forward, find your blocks. Lift your left leg up to hip height. You can keep your hand down or if you wanna bring your hand onto your hip for starters. Open up your torso to the left. Your whole body to the left. Maybe you want to send your arm to the sky. Now the drishti for this posture could be down at your hand, could be forward, or eventually it's up towards your upper hand. Three calm breaths. And then when you're ready to rotate, lower the hand down. Square your hips towards the mat. Keep your left toes down, but find the rotation from your belly as you twist to the right. Right hand could be on the hip or up to the sky, whatever your shoulder will allow. Good 
three breaths. And then when you're, if you want, you can pause or try that one more time, just flow. So we're kind of flowing, we're kind of vinyasa-ing. Then one more time, do your parivrita, ardhishandrasan. And then lower the hand down, lower that lifted leg. Take your forward fold, rise up halfway. Exhale, fold, bend your knees, belly on your thighs, rise up. Hands to prayer. Take a couple of breath cycles, take a moment to integrate before we go to the other side. All right. Nice. I hope some of you are using a wall because it's uh, really nice. I'm going to do it on this next side. All right. So when you're ready, we'll hinge forward and we'll bring our hands on blocks or foot on wall. Make sure your torso is long and your hips are over the ankle, your shoulders are over your wrists so that your, your body can open up. All right, then open up your right hip to the right, left hand grounds, right arm on the hip or up to the sky. Take a few breath cycles here. And then de-rotate, turn your hips down to the wall, your toes down to the wall, and then twist to your left. And then you could take a rest or you can go back one more time each side. And last time, revolve it. And then unwind, stepping into your forward fold. Rise up halfway. Exhale and fold, bend your knees, arms out like a T with your strong legs, rise all the way up to standing, hands to prayer, and prayer to your heart. Let's take a couple clearing breaths after that. Big inhale, exhale out with a sigh. Make it loud. Let it all go, one more. Actually, one more with maybe some horse lips. Just let it go. Good job. All right, so let's make our way onto our, our back for just a little bit of core strengthening and closing. So you can find constructive rest. So move your blocks out of the way, any props out of the way. Good. All right. And then one, two, I'm just going to come here so you can see better. Press my low back into the earth. And my knees are bent so that I'm really supporting my low back here. Okay. All right, and so we'll do kind of a basic crunch. And this is really, your, your low back should be really nice and stable here as you lift. And think about this lifting to come from more your upper abdominals, the rectus abdominis here, 
and you're just lifting up, even looking up towards the sky, not looking forward and pulling on your neck, right? It's just a lift. Because even if you lift higher and, and you know, kind of look towards your knees or your belly, you're not going to increase this work here. You'll just might, you know, kind of pull on your neck. So it's really important to keep the neck safe and healthy and neutral in line with the spine. So let's bring our hands to a crunch position. Even if you want to have your fingers just lightly touch the sides of your skull to avoid that potential of, of pulling on the neck. Inhale here, exhale, press your low back down and just lift your chest up to the sky. And then inhale, lower down and exhale and lift. And inhale, lower and exhale and lift. And five more times. Lift. Lift. Lift, lift, I think one more. Lift, even hold here, hold, ooh, that feels good, right? Low back is pressing down, I'm really working my core, my head's neutral, and then lower back down, ooh, nice. <sighs> All right, take a breath cycle. Now let's do that again with our legs in reverse table. So once again, the knees are over, the hips, you know, you can keep your feet active, hands holding the back of the skull, inhale, exhale, lift. Three more times, exhale, lift. Inhale, lower, exhale, lift. One more time, inhale, lower, exhale, lift. Now we're gonna do that again, but if you want, the variation would be to um, lift as you extend your right leg and hover it over the earth. Now, the degree that you uh, extend the leg, like here is gonna be a little easier than down here, right? That starts to work the transverse abdominals, the belly, the low belly, right? So you find a place that feels comfortable, um, mostly in your low back area, because if you overdo, you're gonna feel that you're tugging on the low back, it's gonna arch, it might just hurt. So find a comfortable range for that foot. Inhale, exhale, extend the left leg. And then lower back down, bring the leg in, lower your torso. Exhale, lift as you extend the right leg. And then lower torso, bring the leg in. Continue like that. Flowing with your breath. Okay, we've got a vinyasa here too. Let's do two more, one, one more each side, whatever, whichever side you've been on. Last one. And then lower your feet, lower your torso, lower your arms. <sighs> okay. We're gonna do one more little round of that from reverse table. Um, we'll extend our arms to kind of get us into like a low Navasana. But again, your low back is really stable. You could take this up into a high Navasana. We'll just do that maybe once, rising up and lowering down. And then we'll all rise up and we'll stay up because we'll try to do a, you know, a Navasana, even a modified Navasana with a twist. So that's the boat pose, Navasana. All right, so when you're ready. Let's bring our legs to reverse table. Legs are active. You can keep your hands behind your head if you want, or you can let your arms reach forward, palms up. Inhale here, lift your chest, reach forward, extend the right leg. Bring the leg in, lower your torso. Exhale, extend left leg, lift your torso. One more time each side. Lower, lift and extend. Lower, lift and extend. Lower, this time do one each side or extend both legs. Bring them in and lower. One more time, extend the other leg or both legs. Stay here and hover 
or lift up Navasana. One more time, lower down, low Navasana. Lift up, full Navasana. Whoops, as best you can, get up there. Take a breath or two. Keep lifting your heart. And then bend the knees, lower the feet. Whew, that's a lot. Then we're gonna add a twist here. Last round, promise. So um, if you want, you can keep your toes down and lift your heels. You know, um, find the balance on the sits bones, lift your heart. You could come into reverse table, or you know, the, that reverse table legs. You can hold your hamstrings. You can just extend your legs if that's no problem for you. Up to you. I'm gonna keep bent legs. Arms out, inhale, exhale, bring both arms over to the left. Take a twist here. So I might be here, right? This is fine. But keep lifting the heart wherever you are. Go to the other side, twist there. This is actually good. I can really get my spine longer, a little more control. Maybe try one more time and lift one leg or both. Last time, other side. Come back to center, lower your feet, bring your feet together, let your knees splay out. Baddha Konasana. Oh, melt forward after that. Whew. Good, nice job. And then let's extend our legs like we did before. You know, so we got a wide-legged position. You can bring your hands back behind you. Take a little bit of a back bend, just stretch out the belly here. And we'll come back to center. Let's bring our legs together sort of in Dandasana, and then we'll roll back onto our backs for one little, one more posture. So you can just roll down using your Navasana muscles, or you can bend your knees and use your hands up to glide down your hamstrings or your elbows. Good. Once you come onto your back, you can just pause there for a moment. Take a breath or two after that abdominal work. Bring your knees in towards your chest, give them a squeeze. We'll finish up with one happy baby. So it might be that you keep your knees in towards your chest, rocking side to side or circling the knees. You can let feet come together and knees go apart with your hands on the ankles or shins, or you can send your feet to the sky so the ankles are right over the knees. I like to bring my arms between my legs, but right in front of my ankles, I cross my wrists over my ankles so I can hold on to the outside edges of my feet and then I can pull them down. <sighs> and rock side to side. Or just pause here, drawing your tailbone down, the low back down, pressing the back of the neck down to just get some Get a neutral spine. You're kind of flattening out the natural curves of the spine. And then you can let them resume. You know, let them come back. And then you can flatten again. You can work on pulling the knees down so the thighs come to the outside of the torso. Might feel nice in the hips. Take another breath or two wherever you ended up. And then let's slowly release your legs down, maybe through the bound angle. <sighs> One leg down and then the other. Inhale and exhale it out with a sigh. <sighs> we made it. Take a big inhale here and exhale it out. <sighs> nice work. Maybe extend your legs, let your feet drop out to the sides, and even part your legs a little bit. Maybe bring one hand on each half of the pelvis to ground 
the center part of your body down. Let your hips and legs surrender to the support of the earth. Spin your palms up to the sky and reach your arms forward on either sides of your body in a low V. Feel the shoulder blades draw together under the back. So you're broad across your heart. Breathe deeply here, inhaling and exhaling and surrender your upper body, your arms, your chest to the support of the earth. Oh, maybe take a yawn here. Wiggle your jaw side to side. Oh, oh. Release any tension in your face and your neck. Let the back of your head rest on the earth so your neck is neutral. Let your eyes drop back. Your breath pause. Letting your head and your entire body float here, supported by the earth. So we can rest and integrate our practice, restore our vital energy, and absorb the shanti, the peace of yoga. The fruits of practice. Despite fervent pleas for ease and safety, there are many days when reality doesn't quite line up with what I choose. Break down, letting go, surrendering even the illusion of control. Breathing into the unknown, sometimes that is what life holds. Practice hasn't brought an end to pain. I still increase my suffering like a fish caught on the line. My struggles only draw the hook in deeper. But being in reality is its own reward. It's the perfect paradox. The courage to stand and breathe when everything in me wants to flee is a great gift as the freedom to seek retreat. No, practice hasn't brought an end to pain, but it has honed my willingness to experience the moment and sometimes see perfection unfolding in ways I wasn't big enough to plan, much less predict. Practice isn't about achieving a goal. It's not a means to pole vault over suffering. Practice is my way of looking at life, looking life in the face and saying yes to all its disparate gifts. Practice keeps me awake when I would sleep and reminds me it's the journey unfolding in this very moment. It's the journey that reveals the truth and not the destination.
So allow your breath to deepen. Movement to fingers and toes. Reach your arms overhead. Stretch up through fingers and down through toes, creating length in the body. Exhale and release. And if you like, give your legs a squeeze. Good. And then when you're ready, you can roll over onto your right side and rest there for a moment. Make your way back up to a comfortable seat. Drawing your hands together at heart center and dropping your head into your heart. Let's lift our gaze and we'll seal our practice by joining our voices in one arm. The divine light in me honors the divine light in you. Namaste. Namaste.